In today's show, we're gonna talk about Power Apps copy an item. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a gallery, we're gonna be able to grab a record and copy that record. We're gonna talk about how to straight up copy it, make multiple copies of it, and even edit the data before making the copy. So just a bunch of little skills that hopefully you guys can bolt into your apps to make them a little more functional. Should be fast, should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi. My name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today's show is all about copying items in Power Apps, right? Sometimes you have this gallery of data and you're like, I wanna just duplicate that. And maybe you wanna duplicate it 10 times, or maybe you wanna duplicate it once, or maybe you want to duplicate it and then edit the data. So we're gonna cover all of those scenarios and we're gonna do it by bolting it into one of my prettier apps so that way it'll look nice. And then hopefully you can take advantage of all the fun. Also, if you're wondering why I got the silly gray background and the sound's not perfect again, still my office is still a place in transition. So we'll talk about that at the end again though. So anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Here we have my little demo app. We've shown this before, right? It was all the cute little colors and animations and things. And so what I wanted to add to it today was the ability to copy an item. So if we go down here to Chewy and we click on the little copy symbol, and you don't have to use a symbol, but I liked it. I give the user options, right? Do you want to make a copy? You wanna do one, three, you wanna edit a copy. So let's just do, let's make three copies. We're gonna click on this, we get a little fly down, the little animator, and then once it's done, it's like, copy complete, continue, sure. Or if we go down here to, uh, let's go to Jennifer's, and so we can say edit a copy. And we edit a copy, we can see that we get all the data loaded here. This is not a form, these are individual controls because I don't like forms. Um, but so I could be like, you know what, Jennifer, the copy of Jennifer is now going to be janitorial. That's right. We cloned Jennifer and added a janitor and we hit save. And look, if we go to the bottom, we can see that there's Jennifer's record. There's all the Chewies that we just duplicated in. So everything is working exactly the way we want. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's just break this app down and talk about how it works. So the first facet here you might notice is that I did uh, change this app from the original version. I went ahead and set it up to go against SharePoint. I was using like an internal data source and I couldn't edit that. So anyway, it now uses SharePoint. Also a reminder, if you go out to training.powerapps911.com, you can actually download this fully functional app and you don't have to like rebuild all this yourself. So anyway, so here what we can do is let's take a look at how this works. So the copy button, all it's really going to do is capture the uh, current line, right? So set var record this item. This is Always my thing, I never use gallery.selected. I always store the current record into a um, variable. So in that way, it's just, you know, there's less chance of something happening, the gallery selected item changing on me or anything like this. I know I click this button, it goes in the variable, it'll be there when I get back. And then I say set var copy to true. And so if we hold down all and press this button, all set var copy to true did was make all the things show up, right? All the visible properties for this stuff is tied to that. So then the first piece of functionality I wrote was just a copy. Now, right here, you're gonna see that there's a whole bunch of extra stuff, right? All the different pop-ups and all those, right? We're not gonna dig into that too much, so just kind of ignore everything from here. And then we'll go after the patch. So let's just talk about the patch portion, right? Because that's what you're after, is how do you copy a record? So to copy it, I'm just gonna say, I wanna patch that same data source, so patch employees, Default employees, right? That means create a new record in employees. And then everything in the, this is the record that I'm patching over. So I'm saying, hey, first name equals far records first name, last name, far records last name, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, that's how I'm mapping all those fields. Now, when I copy it though, I want to kind of delineate somehow. So what I did down here for the title field is I said, you know what? I want to append copy dash ambersand and then var record title. So. Literally, folks, that is all you have to do to straight up copy an item. You know, all the other whiz bang stuff, I'll show you a little bit of that as we go. But this is the statement, right? Just create a new record, right? And defaults employees means creates a new record and then pass it all the fields you want and you are off and running. So pretty straightforward. Um, and then after you do that, then I go ahead and like show some different stuff here. But that was how the, the core of the copy works, right? Um, all these other pieces here, these are around resetting the timer because you notice that like when we press this, right, so if I say just a copy, all right, so I used a timer to control the height of this white rectangle and that's what makes it slowly build out. And then the little spinner that was spinning, I said, hey, spinner, 
you start showing until the patch goes, right? And if we look at our code, so back here on just a copy, you can see that right here, this is where, so these three was what it was to reset the timer, stop it, start it to cause it to start again. And so then set var copy spinner to true. That's what made the spinner icon start spinning. Wee! And then set var bigger copy to true. That's what put the logic in place to start taking advantage of the timer to make the, the width grow, or the height, not the width. If we click on the rectangle ring cell itself, we can see that the height is equal. So if var bigger copy is true, right? So that's what we just set. We set that to true. Then we said make the height 272 because 272 is what I want its static height to be plus 130 times the timer value divided by the timer duration. And so that's what over the course of, uh, what did I do, like three hundredths of a second, I think, or what, well, we can go look at the timer in a second and see how long I told it to take. But that's what caused it to increment. And so it was like 272, 73, 74. And that's why if we press, you know, cancel here, and then we do it again. So we copy somebody, just a copy, right? That's what causes that droop, nice little look. And you notice the spinner, you might not even have seen it. And that's okay because that means that my patch happened so fast the spinner didn't need to render. But I always put spinners in places like that where I know that, you know, while it worked super fast on my fast computer with a fast internet, maybe on someone's phone, it might take four or five seconds because they have a real bad connection. So I just want them to see the spinner to know, hey, the spinner spins until the patching is done. Okay? And so then if we say, all right, well, what does copy complete continue do? Well, actually, before we do that, so notice that the, the box is white, or the, the white box is really tall right now. When I go back into this mode, you're like, wait a minute, why did the white shrink? Well, remember, timers don't have their values while you're in the studio version. So if you look back at my code for this, you notice here that I said hidden timer, right, is, is over here's what I'm using. But while I was building, because building was a pain in the butt, I mean, it took me like two hours to build this app. <laughs> why? What I did was I just... Uh, change this to be like, hey, I just want you to be one the whole time. All right, so I I got rid of all of this. So I'm just cutting this all out and putting it in here. So I commented out the timer piece. So then now with this setup, right, if I am out, nothing, if I come in here and when I say just a copy, it just pops open. But the nice thing about it being set to the static instead of being the set to the timer is what, right? We don't have, we have the, the whole canvas here to work with. So you'll want to do that. Okay. So then with the little continue button, all this continue button does, nope, that's its color. But when you click the continue button, it basically just sets all those variables back to false. It resets the timer. It kind of just puts everything back to the beginning. And that's why when we hit this, everything goes away and we're back here. Okay. So that is copying a single item. If you want to copy three items or 10 items or 100 items, what does that look like? So that's this button. And so if you look at this button, what we're going to do, right, we're just going to ignore all the uh, the resets and the variables. So we'll just kind of do this thing, same type of syntax again, right? Break it out. All that happens here is I want to do a for all. What I said is, hey, for all, and we did sequence three. So this is how I was able to say, do this thing three times. And if you haven't watched Sequence, I'll put a link somewhere up in here where there's a uh, link to the Sequence video. But it's just a nice little function. In this case, it just says create a table with three items in it, one, two, and three. And so then for all says, okay, for each one of those, loop through and do what we need to do, which is the exact same patch statement that we did in the previous example. Like word, word for word, right? I just copy that patch statement. I'm just running that patch statement three times. That's how we're able to get it. Now, if you didn't want to hard code this to three, you could have a text input, a drop down, a slider, some other way for them to get, you know, to tell you the number of uh, copies they did. I just, I thought, you know, once I showed you this, you could, <laughs> you could get an input control that got uh, a number. So if you want to have more copies or less copies. And we do this a lot. Um, like I do this with like inventory apps and part number apps and things like that, where I'm like, hey, I need to create 27 of these same exact parts so then they can just, you know, give me the serial number for each one individually. So this for all and then a patch is part of copy is pretty common. And I've probably done more of this than I have just straight up one copies. So, okay. Other than that, this button exactly like the other one. Okay. So that's the cop make three copies. So then now we also have this edit a copy. And so on the edit a copy, this one's a little bit different. 
So we're gonna ignore all of its little variables for showing and hiding stuff. Oh, but no, we can't because that's actually all it does. So what I did was, you know, I'm like, hey, reset. So this set of resets here, right? All of this highlighted. This is gonna reset all those input controls back to their default values. And then we're going to start the timer, right? So that's this uh, sequence of stopping the timer, starting the timer. And then we're gonna set var bigger copy to true, which is what helps the expansions happen. And then we're using a variable called set var edit copy to true. And that's what tells all those edit controls to show up. So if we hold down the alt key and press this, we should see, oh, you know what? So this is not gonna show up. I forgot I fixed this. So if you hit play, it, they'll show, let's cancel out of here. Let's do this again, edit a copy. So now they all show up. And the reason that they're not all showing up in this mode, well, let's go find one of them. So let's find our input first name. Well, it only shows up when var edit copy is true and hidden timer value equals hidden timer duration. What's the current value? Zero. What's the duration? 300. So it doesn't, sh they don't show up right now. So what I would need to do is select all six of these. And then I would just go right here and be like, well, you know what? We're just going to comment out all this. And so then now they would just show up no matter what. And the reason I put that in place was I didn't want them to show up while the little expansion was happening, right? I want them to, the expansion to hop in and then those to pop in. Okay. So we'll, we'll comment this out. And, and that's one of the problems with working with animations in these really pretty apps is you have to sometimes like fudge things to make it work while you're in here and then, you know, turn all that off once you got done building it. And, and it kind of adds, adds some extra work. Anyway, so if we look at this first text input, so let's look at the first name input now. So we know why it's visible. So for the default for all of these, all I did was set the default to be the variable, right, var record in the first name field. So every one of these controls is just set to show the default value from the variable. So that's why, remember, the variable has a copy of the record. We haven't written it to SharePoint or to our data source yet, but it's sitting there holding it like, hey, here's all my values. So that's why you see all this. But then you could say play, right? And we could be like, you know what? Instead of, um, right, we got to cancel out of here. My save button, right? Notice my save button's missing because it has that same weird logic. So let's do this again edit a copy, there's the save button. So then now if we change this from, um, you know, Nicola to Nicola, I don't know, 12. I don't know, her first name is now Nicola 12. It's it's a weird world we live in, people change their names. So if we say save now, um, what's gonna happen? Well, we can't see the save button, so let's go find our button, save, edit, copy, and let's just go do our same visible, right? Put a little code right here, perfect. And so then now if we look at the on select for this button, you're gonna see that what it's doing, right? If we kind of ignore, let's go right here. So when you click on save, it is patching employees, default employees, right? So make a new record. First name is then just the input. Last name is that input, right? Department is the selected result. Hire date is that one. Wage, is, and we wrapped it in value, it's a number, and then title is title. So just a normal patch statement, but we're just patching new values. It just happened instead of those text inputs all being blank, right? We just pre-populated them. So if the user just took it and hit save, it would just go and it would just make an exact duplicate. But if they want to come in here then and edit the data, they can do exactly what they wanted to do. So that is, you know, all of that, right? And then we just do all these set and all these variables back to false. And that's what's going to turn everything back off and let us go. But you know, if we do Nicola 12 and we say save, I scroll to the bottom, Nicola 12 young. Now, notice in my code, did you see the word refresh anywhere? No, you did not, right? That is the number one bad habit I see from people. It's like, hey, well, after I save this data, you know, I need to do a refresh. Well, what does a refresh do? A refresh says go reload this entire data source again. Don't do that, right? You should never use refresh unless you have a specific reason why, right? Don't assume you need a re refresh. Prove to me that your data is not showing up without a refresh, and then we can talk about it. Because what happens here is Power Apps is smart enough to know, hey, this gallery is showing employees. I just patched employees. Hey, I should make sure I add that new record into my little data set, right? So all of these copies, everything that I've done here is immediately showing up, right? Edit a copy, Nicola Young 3, right? And we say save. As fast as I can scroll to the bottom, it's there. 
So you do not need a refresh. Okay, I just wanted to, whew, I, I, I see it all the time. I, I see it in people's codes and they're like, why is my app slow? And I'm like, look, you're refreshing the data 17 times and you don't need to. Very common mistake. Other than that, that's, you know, that's really the copy type of stuff we need to do, right? We just need to be able to copy a record. Um, as you're thinking through this, you know, there's different ways you could adapt it. You could start to think about, you know, maybe you want different inputs. Maybe you want to secretly log who changed it, right? So I think like this data source, I think has a, um, a field here, right? So like the created by would already be copied, but we could probably do something like, in there a note field? There's a note field. So we could say copied by, um, and then we would just do a little something like this and then say user dot full name. And so then it's not going to show up in my app, but it should write. So let's just do another copy. Let's, let's copy. We'll cancel out of here, right? We'll go copy a Chewy record. Noop. And we'll copy Daniel to me. What's up, Daniel? Copy him, do just a copy. So in the app, we couldn't see it, but if we went over to our SharePoint site and went to employees. And so then over here, if we scroll down to the bottom, right, there's a copy of Daniel. And if we scroll sideways, look, we, we wrote to the note field. So, right, you can do that type of stuff as well. You don't have to just do the fields I've shown you. You could do additional fields. Maybe, you know, one of my other customers, we write all this to a history table as well. So every time we copy, we go write the new copy and then we have a separate like logging table that we capture this into. All these things are your, uh, your options. So, all right, well, I think that's it, right? I told you kind of a shorter video. I didn't think there was too much going on here. Remember, if you want this fully functional app with all of its crazy animations and things that show and don't show, right? You can go download this from training.powerapps911.com if you're a subscriber to the curated library. So, you know, it's a nice little way to kind of, you know, get in there and get your data or get these apps without having to rebuild all of them. Uh, but if not, you've got all the pieces, right? You came for it. It's really what I was after was make sure you guys knew how to copy data. Um, if you get any ideas for future videos, leave me comments below. I respond to all my comments. I'm usually about a week behind, but eh, you know, it, uh, sometimes it takes a while. There's about 500 a month right now, so there's a lot to respond to. Um, also in my office, you can see I kind of changed the colors in here again. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to get a shelf, like I said, back there somewhere. And then I want to get some different, you know, texture going on. So I promise it'll get better. And I also, I just can't hang anything on the wall. So there's a little bit of an echo, not echo. You can just kind of hear a little hollowness to my voice. That'll be gone as soon as the paint cures and I can put my other stuff back up here. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here. So that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.